we're gonna, here to review a uh, mock draft we just did, expert mock draft, single QB. We got a little round table here. We got David, Kevin, Jacob. You guys want to introduce yourselves and we'll jump in? Yes, sir. I am John's teammate over here at Sports Ethos. Uh, Jacob, uh, I just uh, I just started with the crew and uh, I'm just having a blast. And over here, uh, I, I will let Kevin introduce himself. Uh, he's he, Kevin and David are good buddies of mine, uh, and I'm so appreciative that they have come on to uh, talk about their mock drafts. So why don't you uh, why don't you start us off, Kevin? Yeah, no, I appreciate you having me on. Um, you know, I do content over at the Debra Al. I used to be at Football Guys and Fantasy Pros, uh, but kind of doing our own thing now. Um, and yeah, anytime I can hop on, talk a little bit of this, do a little redraft. I'm in redraft mode now, starting to get next time uh, as the camps have started. I appreciate you inviting me. Yeah, and I'm David Mendelson. You can find me on Twitter at Dimendio2. Um, in between all the training camp hype videos on Twitter that you might find some tweets I'll put out. But uh, yeah, just excited to be here. I do content over for RPO Football, Triple Play Fantasy, the company that I run, uh, a little bit of fantasy pros, and um, yeah, excited to be here. All right, this is great. All right, we're, we're finally started. Little technical difficulties. <laughs> but um so yeah uh it's great because i love that we got you david you drafted first kevin you drafted last right so we kind of yeah. then we, me and jacob were in the middle so we kind of get a nice uh, perspective from every spot um but, you know you guys want to kick it off any thoughts comments how, you know anything you thought about the the mock uh well as the first pick if you had me at half ppr one qv that made the pick very <laughs> easy for me to uh to go christian mccaffrey there Anything that's half PPR is going to make it a little bit more balanced between running backs and wide receivers. And obviously, since it's one quarterback, I don't have to look uh, to take multiple quarterbacks in this draft. So to me, it was the easy one, one pick Christian McCaffrey, not much analysis needed. He's good at football, should be mm -hmm. in contention for, you know, one of the league leaders in touchdowns, if not maybe number one in the league, catches the ball, runs the ball with efficiency. Um, and in one of the best offenses in football that creates a lot of big plays. So uh, that was an easy pick for me. Yeah, I absolutely agree that CMC is the slam dunk 101. And then I had the 107, uh, and I was on the clock for a while because the person in front of me was taking a little bit longer. Uh, so I was worried that they were going to take Bijan Robinson. So I was prepared to take Amon Ross St. Brown. So after CMC went Lamb, Tyreek Hill, Jamar Chase, Justin Jefferson. So all the wideouts were being taken. So I, so I thought there was a chance that Bijan could fall. Um, if not that Amon Ra was the play, uh, but I, but they winded up taking Brees Hall. So it was an easy Bijan for me. I'm a huge Bijan stand this season. I'm sure we all are here. I mean, you know, after hearing new head coach Raheem Morris's words of saying like, we're going to get him the ball as much as we can. Uh, he's, he is, you know, he is up there for me after CMC on, you know, he is a league winning type of back in a new offense quarterback by Kirk Cousins. So uh, easy pick for me at the 107. How early would you take Bijan? Like if you had the fourth, would you look at him there? Uh, I still would take Lamb ahead, uh, Lamb ahead of him, but then I would take, I would take Bijan probably at, at the 103. It would be a coin flip between him and Tyreek. Uh, but just, you know, he's young. Uh, Tyreek Hill's aging a little bit more. So, you know, he's around 30. So I think I would lean towards Bijan after Lamb at the 103. Cool, cool. Yeah, I went I went Puka, my guy, who people seem to sleep on. But, uh, you know, I just – what more could he have done last year? He broke, you know, rookie records, monster. I'm a big uh, big Rams believer this year. But, uh, Kevin, you had the real test, eh? Being on that turn, you know, you're not going to get picked for a while. What, what was yeah. going through your mind? Yeah, this was tough because I know I, I kind of wanted AJ Brown at 112, but he went right before me at 111. Um, mm -hmm. And a half PBR, it's hard to take Gibbs that early, but there is a tear break at the running back spot. And then I also realized, you know, as you go through it, there was going to be a lot of running backs taken after me that I felt like in that third tier. So I went Gibbs Taylor. And to me, Gibbs to me is talented enough in half PPR. He's going to catch enough passes. And if he does, if Monty does get injured, there's volume there. I mean, he's a top five guy and there is a possibility of seeing that again. But even then, I thought he did better as a, as a runner last year when he did get the opportunity. So you could see them lean on him a little bit more. I don't think it's his 50 50 as people think i still think it's gonna be 60 40 and then with an injury you could be a running back one and then i, I followed that up with jonathan taylor because jonathan taylor is my you know when you're looking at it 
Um, I know from efficiency standpoint, he went down a little bit, but last year, I mean, you know, week seven through 18, 21 touches per game. I mean, he almost averaged hundred yards on the ground in that time frame. him and Anthony Richardson, I think are going to be very, very good, strong together. They're going to lean on that rushing attack. So I don't mind taking that. I really like that group of um, players from Indianapolis as I took Pittman later. Um, but then I, I showed up that running back spot and I knew I wasn't going to take a running back until later. After that, I said, okay, I'm going to really target the other positions. Um, but I got two guys there that I think I can plug in every week. Um, you know, bar an injury, that's always, that's always the case. Uh, but it was tough because I didn't want to take Marvin Harrison Jr. yet. I didn't want to take Devonte, Ayuk, Metcalf, those guys in that mm -hmm. range. I'd rather go with the tier of running backs that are still there. Cause that's still tier one to me. Yeah, there was a lot of wideouts taken. I mean, uh, eight, eight, eight out of 12 picks, even in a half PPR, were wide receivers. Uh, so, uh, you know, I get your logic there, and you got two stud RBs. I think people are sleeping on Jonathan Taylor. Uh, you know, like it's it it wasn't long ago, two years ago, where he got like 1,500 plus yards, uh, and now he has Anthony Richardson, who could vulture some touchdowns, but still, they they have to respect AR. Uh, so JT is going to have a lot of lanes opening up for him. So if he can stay healthy, I, I think that's a fantastic pick right there. Sure. Yeah. Can Yeah. Wait, but Barkley, he didn't fall in. Like for me, it's just the O line upgrade. I call it the one of the biggest in NFL sure. history. You know, obviously the tush push you're worried about, but same thing with Aaron right. Richardson, really. Mm -hmm. True. And then you went with yeah. a rookie, John. Uh, yeah. I mean, Marvin Harrison, he's just my guy. That's just, I wrote today. He's in the. He's in the. You shall not pass in the second round for me. You know, just no matter where he is, I'm taking him. I just. I'm obsessed with him. Um, you know, he just. He's my ride or die. That's right. I like him. A lot. Yeah. And he, right, yeah. Yeah. And then oh. uh, right after that, I went with Brandon Ayuk uh, at the two six. Uh, I think that's incredible value. I know there's a lot hanging over his head right now with the contract situation and the trade situation, uh, but my gut. My my gut feeling is that he'll stay in San Fran. He's a part of an amazing system. He's the number one right like he he is the number one wide out there. He's gonna get so much volume. Uh so to pair Bijan with Brandon Ayuk, I couldn't pass that up, especially after him was going Metcalf, London, and um Olave. Uh I would much rather have Ayuk over those guys, even though London does have a lot of upside uh with Kirk there, just Ayuk's a little bit more safer for me. Uh, yeah, and the trade, it's 50, you know, maybe goes to the commanders, probably takes a hit, right. but if it goes to the Bills, you know, it, it could be insane. Right. And then D. And he, Mendy went with the quarterback over there. The first Yeah, <laughs> I mean, people talk about not taking a quarterback in the second round, but for me, if I'm on the turn, it's I say yeah. it's the third round. Like, if I had taken Nico Collins first, it would have been a third round pick. Uh, but to me, so many players that I was looking at all got taken. I'm big on Drake London. He was gone. I would have loved to take Derrick Henry here. He was gone. Mm -hmm. uh, Devon A. Chain is another one that I, I've been high on this year and I want to get. He was gone. Marvin Harrison, if he somehow would have slipped, I would have taken him too. Like they're, All the guys I really, really wanted were taken in the second round. Looked at the running back situation. Not big on Isaiah Pacheco or Josh Jacobs. Travis Etienne, the top running backs that were left on the board. And uh, I looked at the wide receivers, Nico Collins, Jalen Waddle, Mike Evans, Cooper Cup, like guys that could finish at the top 10 wide receiver, but guys also that are a little bit more volatile at this point. So to me, I was like, let me take the no doubt about it, QB1. And if you're questioning that, he's been the QB1 three of the last four seasons. The only season he wasn't, he was the QB2. So mm -hmm. to me, it's starting a draft with Josh Allen and Christian McCaffrey in a half PPR one quarterback league. I'm okay with that. And then... I paired that with my first wide receiver who I felt had the highest ceiling uh, barring, uh, you know, we could say Jalen Waddle might have a higher ceiling if something happened to Tyreek Hill, but Nico Collins, if he emerges as the number one pass catcher in that Texans offense to me was the highest ceiling of that, uh, the receivers going in the third round. So to me, I want to take a swing to have him be the Texans wide receiver to roster here. And uh, I felt like that was a good pick considering uh, again, he's not necessarily going to catch, 10 balls a game, but he has a high a dot and he gets, uh, he gets downfield. So in, in this type of format, I, I think he's, he's a slam dunk. So I, I like my start with those first three picks. Yeah. I think he led the league in broken tackles too. So from a wide receiver last year. So, you know, it's also, it's the all fun team and it's also the all intimidating team, right? Mm -hmm. Going matching up against you next week. It's like, Oh, he's got the best running back in the league and the best quarterback, you know, it's a high ceiling, high floor. Yeah. Yeah, and then after Collins, like you said, went right. Uh, 
Pacheco, Hertz, Waddle, Josh Jacobs, Trey McBride, and then and then I was up, and it was a slam dunk for me again with Mike Evans. I mean, he, I don't know why, but he's being underrated every single year of his life. I feel like, but 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 especially in his NFL career, every single year he's been in the NFL, he's gotten over a thousand yards. No matter who his quarterback is, he is quarterback proof, the very definition. And Baker is fit to give him another twelve hundred plus yard season, another ten plus touchdown season i mean you can just you can just take that to the bank so he is one of the safest wide receivers uh and you can get him at an incredible discount in the middle of the third uh it was such a great price for me and i think his adp is even later than that uh so he he was a slam dunk for me especially considering the wide receivers taken after him like cooper cup and debo um i just uh i can't get enough mike evans shares especially at his price yeah, also no competition for targets, right? No. Godwin's kind of might be washed, even though he looks good back in the slot. I mean, yeah, yeah it's just old, safe, safe and reliable, right? Most underrated fantasy player in the game. Seriously, though. Mm-hmm. And then we skip uh, ahead. We got Cup, ETN, and then your pick, John. Yeah, I'm a tight end freak. Um, I took I had a Travis Kelsey no matter what policy for 10 years. No matter where I was picking, I'd just take him if he was available. And uh, now it's kind of Sam Laporta for me. Um you know, what did I see? He had uh, 10 touchdowns, but he only had 15, like, red zone targets, right? So that means he's just he's breaking big runs. He's finishing everything. Um, you know, he's an absolute freak show. He broke the rookie tight end curse. Uh, you know, couldn't couldn't be more excited. There we go. And then Debo after that, and then my guy Kevin. Yeah, I think, you know, I, I like DJ Moore. If you can get him in the third or fourth round, if that's your wide receiver one, I do like Caleb Williams coming in this year. And when you look at him, he was wide receiver nine in fantasy points per game last year with Justin Fields at quarterback. And and I think that I do know Keenan Allen is going to be there. Roman Dunes is going to be there. But set career highs and receptions, touchdowns, um, fantasy points per game. You have to like that. And he's pretty efficient last year. 13 yards per route run, 12th and first downs per route run. So they like to get him the ball. Um, I think the volume stats might take a hit, but I think he's going to be a little bit more efficient. And I like that at this range, when you look at the guys that are out there, like, you know, I'm not taking digs in this range with Nico and Tank Dell being there. He got taken mm-hmm. right after that. Devonta's mm-hmm. a tough one because he's probably a wide receiver too. You know, you keep going through their neighbors, Higgins, Pickens, all those guys that got taken after these guys. I felt like there was a pretty big tear break here. So I'll take DJ Moore, who is the wide receiver one on his team. And then Pittman, who's the wide receiver one. Even though I have Johnson Taylor, I do like that offense. I think Indianapolis can be a sneaky top five offense. So I'm okay yeah. with having both those guys. Um, and I think Richardson can take that step as a passer and you get volume at the wide receiver one spot. So I tend to look at that position. If you're on the back end like this, you know, go out there and get that tier. I didn't want to take another running back because I already took two. Um, and, and I wasn't comfortable with Cook or White, those guys there, just based on just the value perspective for me on my roster build. So give me the two wide receiver ones, even though maybe the volume won't be there for more. I think he can be efficient. And mm-hmm. if Taylor hits as a top five back, you're OK with more putting up wide receiver two numbers. This is really the first year that DJ Moore is going to have a somewhat competent quarterback. You know, like we don't know what we don't know what Caleb what exactly Caleb Williams is going to be, but but we have faith that he's going to be a top fifteen passer right from the get go with upside to be top ten. So you know, I'm very curious about DJ Moore. I like the price that you got him there. Uh, So after you went DJ Moore and Pittman went Diggs and then John's pick his first RB. Uh, yeah, uh, I'm, I'm, seems like the, I'm the only one on the cook bandwagon. Um, I absolutely love him. He had 1500 all purpose yards. Uh, just wasn't all he did was missing was the touchdowns. Right. But I think, uh, 15 touchdowns missing from Gabe Davis and Diggs. Allen at 15. He's probably not going to get that again. I think he's averaged about seven or eight last three years. So, you know, I just think there's just so many touchdowns on the board and, you know, he, he officially broke out last year. Right. I just, I don't see why people aren't higher on him. Um, I, I think he's got top five upside for the running back position. If, you know, a couple things break right. Mm, I respect it, man. And then uh, Rashad White after Devonta Smith. Uh, and then I went with Travis Kelsey over Mark Andrews. Uh, at this price in the fourth round, he was going in the first round last year. And I know yeah. he had a few few minor injuries. He's getting older, but he did get he did get the bag this summer. He's there for two more years. Uh, and all reports, you know, like he says that he's healthy. So that's good enough with, that's good enough for me with Patrick Mahomes, um, at the helm to take him at this spot in the middle of the fourth. I think that's a great value. That's a great price. Um, 
So I'll take Kelsey. And then Andrews went right after that. Um, and then Mixon, Walker, Neighbors, uh, T. Higgins, and then back to David Mendy. Yeah, so you were talking about Travis Kelsey, and I was looking how the tight ends were starting to come off the board, and I realized with these back-to-back -back picks that I had to get my tight end before the tight end run continued because in my mind there's eight kind of tight end. Not, not, they're not all in the same tier, but after the eighth yeah. tight end, which is Evan Ingram, there's a significant drop off in my opinion. And I mm -hmm. knew by the time it would come back to me, most likely those eight would be gone. So I wanted to take between Pitts and, Ev and Evan Ingram. And then the guy I took Dalton Kincaid, uh, who I felt like had the highest floor of the bunch right there. Uh, 73 catches and 673 receiving yards last year, two touchdowns, tight end 11 on the season to finish out the year. Uh, you talked about, you know, there was no Gabe Davis anymore. There's no Stefan Diggs anymore. Um, they did draft Keon Coleman, Kevin Coleman's long lost cousin. <laughs> but uh, in all honesty, I was like, yeah, there's a lot of targets that are gone from there, vacated targets. And I'm not saying that Dalton Kincaid is going to get, uh, you know, 50 plus targets added onto what he had, but I would think that he's going to be in the top two in terms of the receivers, in terms of target share yeah. uh, that I would think is terms of how the roster looks right now. Mm -hmm. um, so to me, I took the top tight end available in him and the upside that I think he possesses this season. Um, and then with, after that pick, I went George Pickens, who yeah. is kind of been, there are a few players that I think have been talked up a lot in the off season. And he's in that group in terms of he's taking that next step. He's going to finally be the wide receiver one, uh, on a team that hopefully is going to throw the ball better than they have the last couple of years. You know, Kenny Pickett wasn't the answer. You had the last season, Ben Roethlisberger, that looked like he was hanging on by a thread. Mm -hmm. uh, there's just, and then Mason Rudolph and so on and so on. Uh, George Pickens was a guy that basically was all his targets were downfield. And I think they're going to kind of use him more like we saw De Deontay Johnson this year, where he's going to have a shorter A dot. So he's going to get more catches. And I think he has the talent to be. Uh, a wide receiver one for a team, maybe not, not wide receiver one in fantasy, but I think he's a solid wide receiver two for fantasy this year. And looking at guys that I think are going to be the number one wide receiver for their team to get them in the fifth round. Uh, I think that's a, a pretty good value for him. So I took him there. Yeah. It was. Yeah. I love your top five. Um, I spent the Allen Kincaid stack too. It's like, mm -hmm. once they get inside the red zone, you're probably going to touch down from somebody. Right. <laughs> Watch a lot of Buffalo bills games this year. <laughs> yeah. What um? Who would you rather have a QB for Pickens, Wilson or Fields? Uh, I think as it stands right now, I would rather have Russell Wilson. Um, just because I've he's shown that he's been able to support a number one wide receiver. He showed that with DK Metcalf uh, when he was with Seattle, and he fed Corlin Sutton a, a crazy amount of touchdowns last year before he got benched. Um, mm -hmm. So I do think he has the ability to do that. Justin Fields, obviously, I don't think I'm not saying he's a bad passer. Uh, I think he can definitely get the job done. We saw what he did with DJ Moore last season. Right. Um, so I, I, I'm cool with both of them at this point right now. Um, I just think just from the little I know, just the way that it looks like the Steelers are going to run their offense. Um, Russell Wilson looks like he might be able to be better uh, for receivers right now. But again, uh, I could be very wrong on that. I, I'm just happy that they have two competent quarterbacks. So if one doesn't sure. work out, they have another guy there if you draft George Pickens. Right. For sure, yeah. There's nothing worse than having that wide receiver one. And that, like last mm -hmm. year, he had Garrett Wilson, right? Oh, my God. That was mm -hmm. awful. That was, <laughs> yeah. He's borderline unstartable. Right. Yeah. Uh, just quickly, I guys should jump in. Um, if you guys are enjoying this, make sure you check out the Sports Ethos Fantasy Football Draft Guide. We're all over Twitter. Sign up. It's got a great deal. Prices are low. You can get an all-sports package. We do everything over there. Um, so, yeah, check that out as we continue on with the – what are we, round five? Mm -hmm. Round five. Wait, and I, yeah. What did you guys think about Kelly going tight end, tight end, 3-4? So, yeah. I know, What's Kelly, she's, that? she's very tight end happy. John, you say that you love tight ends. I think yeah. you have some competition, bro. Like, she is she obsessed with tight ends. <laughs> so if you're ever in a league with her, just be mindful that you probably need to take a tight end early if you really want your guy because <laughs> she loves to stack up on tight ends. I remember in the last mock draft we did months ago, I said, hey, you know, I guess you could always trade your tight ends because I think she took three in the first like seven rounds. And she was just like, no one's no one's taking my tight ends from me. 
So <laughs> she really loves her tight ends. <laughs> Okay, cool. All right, you want to continue on, Jacob? Yeah, and then uh, after Pickens went Lamar Jackson, Tank Dell, Zay Flowers, Kyle Pitts, Patrick Mahomes, and then I went with Amari Cooper. Just safe, old, reliable. Uh, <laughs> my last, my last, my last three picks: Mike Evans, Travis Kelsey, and Amari Cooper are just very safe picks. After I took Bijan, and we don't really know what Ayuk's going to do this season, so you know, I had to, I had to combat the upside with just safe floor guys. Uh, because I usually like to start out my drafts with like foundational pieces that I know are going to hit. That's why I almost took Amon Ross St. Brown. Cause you can pencil that in for 1400 yards and almost 10 touch, you know, like eight, eight to 10 touchdowns. But, uh, I had to go with Bijan for the, for the upside. So this is where I look for the safe floor. Like this is usually where I shoot for upside in like rounds five, six, and seven. Uh, but since I went for upside in the first and second round, uh, and with IU situation being a little bit hazy, uh, I want it just to be safe. And I think that Amari Cooper is being slept on too. I like this price personally. Um, you know, I know he did all of his damage with Joe Flacco. Uh, but you know, I guess at, at this range, I'm willing to gamble that Deshaun Watson is, you know, he's had a full year almost, uh, you know, from being absent for so long and hopefully he can just, you know, like, Hopefully Amari Cooper's uh, talent can transcend any flaws that Deshaun Watson has. Uh, and I think it does. And, uh, you know, uh, I think that Cooper has a safe floor and has some upside on some weeks too. Um, didn't, didn't they sign a good backup too? I, I forget who the backup QB in the Browns is. Joe, is it Joe? No, no, no. Uh, no it's um, Jameis Winston. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. Okay. Yeah. Right. yeah, I mean, you know, he, he likes to chuck it, you know, like <laughs> either to his team or the other team, you know, he likes to throw it. Um, would, would you, would you ever bench Cooper on the road? If you had a really good matchup? <laughs> Probably not. I mean, you know, as my uh, wide receiver three, but I did spoil alert, take Jaden Reed with my next pick just for that upside. So, you know, I wouldn't mind switching them, them off if it's a bad matchup. Uh, but yeah, yeah. It just depends on the matchup. Uh, but then there's Cooper and then Anthony Richardson went right after that. I knew that this was going to be a quarterback run. I almost took CJ Stroud, uh, but I am having a very tough time between Stroud and Richardson, like who to take And AR poses so much upside, incredible upside with his rushing ability. Uh, but right there, I just needed a third wide receiver. Uh, I wanted that safe floor, but then AR went right after me and then CJ Stroud and then, uh, and then John. Yeah, well, A. Rich, I mean, he's probably got QB one potential, right? Oh, if he yeah. plays, if he plays seventeen games, I mean, mm -hmm. right? He's probably oh, yeah. QB one. Definitely, uh, but right, Stroud though, he's probably ceiling. I mean, I don't know. It, could he even get to QB three? I don't, you know, without the rushing, like he needs five thousand forty touchdowns. Truth, right? Something yes. like that. But um, uh, yeah, I took Christian Kirk. You know, I'd gone. You know, I took a second year rookie, another second year. So I thought it would go a little a little stability, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. Christian Kirk, I think Jags bounce back a bit. Um, I'm not worried about Gabe Davis. I'm not re really worried about Brian. Brian Is it Brian Williams? Is it, what's the rookie? Uh, Brian Thomas Jr. Brian Thomas Jr. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Brian Thomas Jr. Mm -hmm. um, so, you know, just a nice, easy, safe foreign pick. Oh, yeah. Uh, and then, yeah, we go Kamara and then back to Kevin. Yeah, and, and kind of the similar to what these guys are talking about. The tight end position to me is a big eh, – kind of a drop. I think Evan Ingram and Ferguson can be there. But I, I went sure. Kittle. I, I think that upside for Kittle is that if Ayuk does move on, I think Kittle is the guy that you really want on that roster. So it's kind mm -hmm. of a risky pick because you're like, hey, will he go there? Um, but, you know, when you're looking at him, though, like he had seven games last year, he had 16 or more PPR points. So when you think of that, he, he's there. I know he's – inconsistent at times but he was tied in five last year so if i can get him at this price and, and this adp i'm okay with that i really wanted a rich as my quarterback so i'm kind of i was kind of pissed that he got taken because i wanted to stack him with everybody and just have some fun uh with the my Indy. Indy. i was just gonna have it out the there um Indy. <laughs> but but I'm okay with Murray though. So I, I do think that Kyler with his rushing upside, I think that he is right there. I think that when he was healthy, you saw that his ceiling in 2020, he almost averaged 25 points. He was QB2. Mm -hmm. 
I'm good with that. And if you believe in Marvin Harrison Jr. and you believe in that offense, then you're and McBride and all these pieces. I even see Dorch Love out there, probably David Mindy. Uh, <laughs> then you get Michael, <laughs> you get Michael Wilson, and you get all these types. And even from a passing perspective, I do know that that offense is definitely heavy run. Um, but a lot of it's set up by play action. And I think this year they're going to be even better with Trey Benson and Connor there. So I think it's going to open up a lot of a, a lot of efficiency in the passing game. So and if Murray can just score touchdowns on the ground. I mean, he's a top five guy. Like, I think that him and Richardson could be right there. So I'm okay with either there um, to put him around those guys. And I'd like the Kittle upside if Ayuk gets moved. I don't think Ayuk's getting moved. I, I think that he's going to come back. But even then, I think that with Brock Purdy there, you saw that connection there where he was a top five tight end. And I'm okay taking the risk. So you like Kyler over Dak Prescott, your boy. Yeah. Everyone, he's he he is a diehard Cowboys fan, and even with all this noise of you know, there's no real run game, even though Zeke is there, and you know, mm -hmm. and stuff like that, with Dak yeah. about to throw the ball 5,000 times, you would rather have Kyler over Dak just for the rushing upside. I mean, we're talking six point rushing touchdowns, yeah. I mean, okay. you know, I was huge on Dak last year, and I oh, yeah. and I was like, and nice. I was like, yeah, he's he's the biggest value there. It would be between him and Dak, in my opinion, in terms sure. of like Close. where I was going to lean. Um, but I'll take the rushing upside with Murray. That's kind of where I'm I at wanted, with that. Yeah, I wanted Kyler. I, that was my first piss, like desk pound when he took up. I was <laughs> Marvin Harrison, Kyler stack was my whole plan. Fair. Um, I was furious. Yeah, and then yeah, we we had a little QB run there, you know. But what's what's the QB floor for you guys? Like, what's the what's the latest guy you'd want to take and wait on? Um, oh, I would wait all draft for. A quarterback because in this draft trevor lawrence went in the second to last round and i actually think he's going to bounce back this year so i mean you know like you could wait like there's a teardrop with the tight ends there's a teardrop with the quarterbacks too but there's a lot of good ones what are you going to say david i would say once you get outside the top 10 then i'm probably not going to force a pick i probably would just take two plus i would take two quarterbacks i would take Jaden daniels as one yeah, and then maybe someone like a, a Justin Herbert, and I would just try to or, you know pair those together and just hope one of them turns into you know a top mm. five quarterback. But to me, it's like once you get past Dak and Kyler Murray, there's a teardrop for me, and at that point, it's just like okay, I'll just take whatever is left again. Try to get Jaden Daniels for the the upside, and then try to get mm -hmm. someone like Justin Herbert who could step back. He, he's been a top five quarterback before, and they're going to probably need to pass a lot with uh, the uh, running backs that they have over there. So um, I, I would probably take a couple shots later on with those guys. I will say though, Jacob, if I can get Tua in the 13th round, I might wait for Tua because if, <laughs> if, you, if, if you can get, and I get it. No, and, and Minnie's correct. Like if you're looking at it from just a weekend week out where you're comfortable plugging these guys in da after Dak, I mean, love maybe where you got love in the eighth, you know, yeah. depending on what you believe there, that's that kind of tier for me where it's like, yeah, I'm, I'm comfortable with this being my QB one. Two was yeah. interesting, though, because, you know, the splits are weird because last year you start off hot, but that offensive line was a mess. There was a lot of injuries on that offensive line. I think I went through it. I think they had like, uh, what was it? I think they had like 11 different offensive linemen start a game last year when I was diving into it for something oh. I was doing. I don't remember what. So, like, you, you remember that. And so, like, if you can, which I don't know if in a regular draft you'll see that. Um, I think two will go a little earlier. But if you can get, like, he stacked Waddle and Tua here. And he took Waddle mm -hmm. in the third and two in the 13th. Like, that's a really good stack. Like, the other guys, yeah, I think they're capped a little bit. Goff is capped a little bit. I like Lawrence, too. Um, but, you know, if you can get him in that range, yeah. But you better you better hit on those other guys early because um, you need that solid floor from your first right. five, six, seven picks if you're going to win in the quarterback position. Two is the only interesting one to me. That's a fun ADP. What do you guys yeah. think about drafting Jared Goff strictly knowing you're going to play him for all his home games right. and then <laughs> being another quarterback to stream for his road games? Well, that's, that's, right. what I like to do. that's what I like. I look at last year. I tried to look at like the, like what his home games and then who would be the other QB to match up based on like that schedule. Right. Just so you're avoiding like Niners and, you know, uh, Jets yeah. games. I remember there's like a great Derek Carr, Jared Goff overlap, but then Carr wasn't really good for any of the games. Right. I also saw a post today on X that uh, Jared Goff doesn't play away from home until like early to mid November. So he's oh, wow. going to have a solid string of home games or like, no, 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 no. It was dome games. It was all yeah. in home where he thrives. Uh, so, you know, he could be amazing for you for the first six to seven weeks. Uh, and then by then you'll, you know, if you took another quarterback with him, you can just start him and stuff, you know, like in favorable matchups. But Jared Goff has a really favorable 
first first half of the season, really, which is uh, which is a pro tip for all of you. <laughs> okay, let's jump back into this. So where where do we end here? I took uh, Dak. We got Terry McLaurin. We got Hollywood, who I love, and then Jacob. Yeah, you got Jaden Reed. Jaden Reed, I just like the upside. Uh, he had a great rookie season. Uh, so, you know, I just wanted to take a shot on Reed for the upside, just strictly upside purposes, because after that was Keenan Allen and Chris Godwin and Calvin Ridley. And it's like, you know, I've had my fair share of safe guys that I took before that. Why not take a shot on Jaden Reed and see if he takes the leap? So do you guys, Kevin, David, how do you guys rank the, the Green Bay wide receiver room? Oh man, it depends on how I'm feeling that particular day. <laughs> okay. Uh, I would say when it's all said and done, I think if assuming Christian Watson plays at least 12 games, I think Watson's the one. And then I I think I think Dontavian Wicks might end up being the two. Wow. That's your spicy. Spicy, sir. Jordan Love just talked about him the other day. Mm-hmm. He's one of the biggest sleeper candidates. It's been talked about this offseason in multiple different yeah. places. Um, yeah, he is. I mean, he's a lot of dog to his game. Uh, you saw him in the playoffs last year, too, like where he was really, you know, Jaden Reed wasn't as healthy as he'd been during the end of the regular season. Jaden Reed is a good wide receiver. I felt like they used him too much of a gadgety player to where it became he became reliant on scoring the touchdowns and he wasn't getting enough shots downfield just as a regular receiver. That's the only part that scares me a little bit about Jaden Reed. And I know I'm pretty sure, didn't he already have an injury or something pop up? Something like an NFI. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, I'm a little worried about since his cost is a lot more than Wicks, I would much rather take Wicks later for me personally. Mm -hmm. Um, just because I think with how they use Reed, there's a bigger chance for injury. Um, and I think that that could elevate Wicks uh, to over to be able to produce better than his ADP. But I, I think, I mean, all three Packers receivers, if they're on the field, are going to be a problem for defenses. So it's if you have Jordan Love, that's going to be a, a good deal for him. Uh, I didn't even have Wicks in the three. I was thinking Dobbs. But, yeah, okay, w- Wicks making the leap. Respect. Yeah, I mean, it can have all four of them. Like, yeah. none of them are superstars, but like, that's as solid a one through four as there is in the NFL. Mm-hmm. Okay, moving on. Where did we start here? So, yeah, Allen, Godwin, Ingram. So, we're thinking Ingram, that's the last great tight end, but Ferguson could maybe creep in. Yeah. 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 I think at range. Yeah, I just like Ferguson. I think he led all tight ends and red zone targets. So, I was a big fan of that. Mm-hmm. James Conner, Calvin Ridley, and then back to Mendy. Uh, Calvin Ridley was the first really bad snipe. Uh, that was mm-hmm. who I was going to take here. And um, disclaimer, this pick was before the yeah. incident. <laughs> so I would not have taken him here had that had already come out. But um, I made the pick at the time because sure. the uh, I think whoever, whether it's Darnold, uh, or, or whether it's, you know, JJ McCarthy, I think the quarterback play is going to be fine in Minnesota and Jordan Addison was a touchdown machine last year. I thought he was the best wide receiver at that point for me. Um, again, I would not have made that pick now, um, with the information. Sure. Um, but I thought I was really happy to get Jonathan Brooks to pair this with, um, Jonathan Brooks, I feel like is a player that by another month from now, when fantasy draft seasons in full swing and all the home leagues are drafting. He's going to ADP is going to shoot up a round or two by then. Um, I think people are, you know, concerned about the knee and maybe it'll take him a little bit to get going, but he doesn't have a ton of proven competition there. You know, Chuba Hubbard's a, a, a fine back. He's not a, a, to me, like a starting NFL caliber running back. Um, and Brooks was the no doubt running back one and would have probably been a first round pick had he not had the thing happen with his knee. Um, I think maybe it takes a few weeks before he gets going, but I think he's one of those players that you can get him as your RB two or RB three, and you should be really thrilled. Um, so I was happy to get him to pair with McCaffrey as my starting running backs. My only worry, he's got the triple red flag, right? Coming off a knee injury, Carolina's bad and their O-line sucks. Right. So I just fear it's like a giant situation last year. They should have a better offense. They also have a better head coach that has a better different scheme. I think that's going to help. Uh, obviously, like you would hope, their offensive line is going to be healthier. Um, they made some investments this off season. 
So I, uh, it's hard to go anywhere but up from what they had last year, right? So, <laughs> there you uh, are. So I'm looking at it. Yeah. Yeah, and then after you went, uh, Najee. So, so you like Jonathan Brooks over? You know, I can see why over Najee Harris because, uh, you know, like there's the Jalen factor there. Uh, but then there's David Montgomery, who's pretty safe, and then uh, Ramondre Stevenson. You like Brooks over Stevenson? I do. I mean, Antonio Gibson's there, and they paid him yeah. uh, some money this offseason. I think he could really hurt Ramondre Stevenson being in there on third downs, um, you know, in, in the receiving game. I mean, Ramondre Stevenson's not a bad pick. I was looking sure. at, at this range here. Which running back do I think is, is going to be on the field more, assuming, again, his knee holds up, and be able to also not just be the goal line back, but also be a guy that's going to catch passes and also be a guy that's going to be a, a big part of their offense. Stevenson can be that, but you look at Montgomery has Gibbs. You look at Stevenson has Gibson, who I think will impact third downs. Um, and then Najee Harris, who has Jalen Warren. And to right. me, I, I was like, I'll take the guy that's paired with Chuba Hubbard um, here. And I think has the, the potential highest ceiling pick here with Brooks. Right on, right on. All right, so it went Brooks and then Najee Harrison, Jake Ferguson, David Montgomery, Stevenson, Hopkins, and then I went with Swift. Uh, you know, he got the bag from Chicago. Chicago's going to have a lot better offense. I needed a, I needed a running back too. Um, so I, you know, uh, it was kind of a no-brainer pick for me, but there was some other running backs that I was looking at, uh, like Raheem Mostert, who was being slept on. John and I were talking about this earlier. Uh, you know, it just seems like Mostert's going to be a value in every single draft that – that uh that there is um uh, so after swift went xavier worthy uh who has a ton of upside in kansas city uh but he's but he's also fighting targets with brown and then rice when he comes back and, and kelsey, kelsey. So, yeah. right uh so yeah i mean like that was pretty early oh i just noticed that that guy also took hollywood brown josh larkey he took hollywood brown the round before and then xavier worthy so he's kind of he's kind of you know uh you know, he's a, uh, oh man, what's the saying? I don't know, but, uh, like uh he's playing in red and black and roulette. <laughs> yeah, 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 exactly. He's not going to lose, I guess. Uh, <laughs> so Swift, Worthy, Mostert, uh, and then back to John's pick. Yeah, I just, every time I look, I just love this glut of running backs. Um, that's why, like, Kevin, you, you stacked yours up front, which is, you know, fine because, you know, you get the position kind of overdone with, but I just, this, these two rounds, it's just all these running backs who I think have a ton of value. Yeah. Obviously, they won't all hit. They all got huge red flags. But um, sure. like, if I'm doing an auction, I'm getting like four of these running backs uh, just for, you know, what, eight, ten bucks or something. But, you know, Aaron Jones, average five yards to carry his career, got hurt week one on like a 50 yard touchdown. You know, he finished the season like a monster. Minnesota's got a great O line. Um, but, you know, he's hitting the running back cliff. And I think, you know, it's just, it's boom or bust. If he's great, mm -hmm. awesome. If he's not, I'm going to have to. <laughs> hopefully dispense him but um yeah i just i love i love all these guys that's why the john the brooks thing kind of shocks me there but you know if you you know it just he's this high ceiling low floor right or high mm -hmm. floor, low floor which is the best yeah. floor yeah <laughs> yeah and then uh aaron jones who i'm kind of i'm kind of cooling on aaron jones just because ty chandler did show a lot of promise towards the end of the season last year but that doesn't mean that they both can't eat in this offense that, you know, if JJ McCarthy or Sam Darnold starts, then they're probably going to rely heavily on the run game anyway. Um, and then Romo Dunze went after that. And then we got Kevin's pick. Yeah. You know, um, looking at the board and everything there, I, to me, when I'm looking at the chiefs wide receivers, I'll take the cheapest one. So to me, I like Rasheed Rice there. I don't know if, I don't know if he's going to get suspended or not. I right. have no idea. So, like, this is really just a risky pick at this point. But I don't think he's going to get suspended more than four games. If I knew the NFL like I know the NFL, like, it's hard for me to see him really get suspended there. I know some yeah. smart people are talking two games. If that's the case, like, last year down the stretch, when he's kind of getting into his run, he was 12th in target share. He was 10th in yards per out run. And when you look at that, and he was 9th in fantasy points per out run. So if you go to fantasy points, they talk about that.com, and they look at that. That's a big, big number there. If you can get that, plus you're looking at him, I think that he could be the wide receiver too. I think Worthy's a fine pick too. I don't mind Worthy. I mm -hmm. like him better than Hollywood Brown though. So I will take him there. If Kelsey does get banged up or whatever they say, I think Rishi yeah. Rice is can be the number two 
target get her on this team or hey, he can he can push for one i mean it depends on what they do with kelsey and everything there and then i love deonta johnson this year I, sign mm-hmm. me up because that dude if he doesn't finish as a wide receiver too i i'd be shocked i mean he's in a great offense dave canale's offense and the biggest thing about his scheme is positionless and so this is the first time what he does is he puts guys in there in in any spot on the field and all they gotta do is get open well you know the one thing deonta johnson can do he can get open mm-hmm. he just hasn't mm-hmm. had a quarterback get him the football and I understand where the Bryce concern, but Bryce can get people to football. Like the thing with yeah. Bryce was offensive line is a little bit better. In my opinion, I do think that it's still got work to do, but I think Canales system and what he's going to be able to do is get these guys in the right spots. He's going to pepper Deontay Johnson. Like Adam yeah. Thielen's there. Yeah. Great. Xavier Leggett. Yeah. Great. Okay. It's going to be Deontay. That's where the ball is going to go. And if you can get Deontay as your wide receiver four ish three in that range, I think that he's going to get, he, he'll earn that ADP. He's going to go out there. Oh, yeah. He's going to outperform that ADP in my opinion. It's a great pick. Yes. So let's hypothetically, let's say Rice isn't suspended. Where would you guys put him? Oh, you would probably be in round. I mean, I would take him. I would probably take him ahead of, I don't know, round four or three. You know, here's my thing. With, here's my thing with Rice. I don't know if you guys have saw Matt Harmon's reception perception of his routes last year. Mm-mm. It was something like th- like seventy five percent of his routes were pretty much slants and like outs and like screens. Yeah, it was all he yeah. wasn't running. He wasn't running any actual like really like NFL routes where he was getting targeted. He was mm-hmm. a short A dot player that they were you know using around the goal line. You know they would throw him a quick screen or you know a slant. Um, and that was a problem in college too. Was he wasn't they didn't project him as a great route runner. You add Marquise Brown. You add Xavier Worthy. You know, Travis Kelsey has had his snaps go down each of the last few seasons, but he'll be there in the red zone, obviously. Uh, part of me is like with a better wide receiver room, uh, does Rasheed Rice take a step back? You know, he's still efficient, but the people might think he's the number one wide receiver in Kansas City. It wouldn't shock me if Hollywood Brown ended up being the the number one in terms, if you look at the end of season, the yards and touchdowns uh it could i just to me i'm not drafting rasheed rice unless he's the last like how kevin did where he was the last of the three going but mm-hmm. i'm not drafting him ahead of the other two um even without this if, if they announce he's not suspended i'm not gonna pay for that price uh i have to see him be able to win at different routes and hopefully this off season he's been working on being able to to get better at those types of routes but matt Harmon is probably the best in terms of charting wide receivers. And when you see that, and then you see how a lot of how his production came and you see the added players now in the wide receiver room, to me, there's a lot of marks against him to repeat what he did last year. Hmm. Okay. Wow. <laughs> Fair enough. That's convincing, David. I'm not going to lie. Yeah. <laughs> I, I could be completely wrong. Cause if he's good, it's good for if I'm a big chiefs fan, but that's the just at least thing, how I'm going the drafts. Just to, just to counter that. The one thing I would think of like, and you're right. Harmon does a great job of ch- charting and all of that yeah. with, with, I think Brown and worthy kind of double dip each other in terms of what they're trying to do on the field. Like, I think those right. two guys, like from a, from a scheme perspective, those are your deep guys. Those are your more nuanced route runners. Those are the things. So that still leaves a role for rice to be that slant guy, to be that over the middle guy. Like, sure. I don't know how, you know, he's got to be efficient though. I don't know how many targets he's going to get. So like, if you're talking about like, Hey, you know, three targets, he better turn those three to 80 in a touchdown, right? Like three catches, 80 yards over the middle, those things they saw in the Super Bowl. So I, I think you're right. Again, to reiterate though, I'm not taking him ahead of those other two guys at this point. Like if he's there, at the if he's the fourth chief yeah. wide out, essentially with Kelsey, I'm okay with that. Um, and I don't mind that upside there. And plus when you keep, when you go in the next wide receivers taken, Guys like JSN, Brian Thomas, Watson. I like Lad. Um, those picks, mm-hmm. like I'm okay taking a little bit of a risk at this point in the draft. And that was like what I would reiterate too is Kevin took him last, but we were talking about if there's no suspension and that ADP goes where he's the first one taken. No, you were talking shit to me. Don't lie. I, yeah. <laughs> That's fine. That's fine. I, I heard it. Do. I always love it. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Okay. So yeah. So Deontay, then we got now it's a little running back run. Zamir White. I took Tony Pollard. I mean, you know, the thing we kind of learned about running backs is don't, <laughs> not to shave your Brooks pick again, but don't take them the year after the injury, right? Wait the year, let them under underappreciate, let them let their ADP go down, and then get them on the bounce back. But right, Titans O line should be better, right? They've they've invested back to back picks. They got their new coach, whose O line 
you know, Maestro. Uh, but, you know, is Ty J. Spears is better, better than Tony Pollard? All right, he could be. Maybe. I don't know. Yeah, yeah that's, that's, a, that's a tough ba- – I don't know if I've drafted any of that backfield. In any it's hard. It's fun. hard. It's, yeah. Yeah, and then after that, uh, I went with Jordan Love with my first quarterback. Uh, not the sexiest pick, but he did finish as the quarterback five between weeks one through 17. I know you're saying, like, why didn't I add 18? I don't really add 18 when I when I try to – when I, when I look towards the past, I don't look at week 18 because that's kind of an anomaly for me, except for some teams who had something to play for. Uh, I get that. But, you know, I just looked through weeks one through 17. And uh, in Jordan Love, I think he finished quarterback five, even if you count 18. Uh, you know, he averaged uh, over 19 fantasy points per game uh, with a wide receiver core that was extremely young. I think they were all rookies, basically. Uh, so you you got to – you got to think that all of those wide receivers with another full off season uh, are only going to get better. Jordan loves only going to get better. Uh, I know he's holding out right now for a contract, uh, but of course that's going to get resolved. Um, So, you know, I'm not worried about that at all. So, you know, the quarterback five from last year, he's young. It was his first year starting. Um, I think he has some ceiling too, as long uh, as well as a safe floor, but I was thinking, you know, if I draft Jordan Love, I am going to draft a quarterback soon after, which I did, uh, who has who has incredible upside. Uh, you know, I won't have any spoilers right now, but uh, I do like Jordan Love's floor in a division that he's going to have to throw a lot um, against the Bears, uh, against the Vikings. Mm, I, you know, it just depends on J.J. McCarthy. Uh, but just that division, uh, he's going to have to throw a lot. Uh, so he has a very safe floor. Um uh, and then after that went JSN. Uh, oh, sorry. Love, though. What do you have, 32 touchdowns last year? More or less the season. Sound, oh, um, mm, probably a, around the same. You know, I can see like 30, 30 to 35. So, you know, that's probably the number, you know, that like Vegas is going to have over or under 32 and a half, I'm sure. You know, like around that area. Uh, so I think he can repeat last year's numbers, if not get better. Uh, and he does have sneaky – Sneaky rushing upside. I think he can hit 20, 20, 20 to 30 yards a game, uh, which is nice. Uh, and then we got JSN. We got Brian Thomas Jr., Jalen Warren, Ty J. Spears, Christian Watson, and then to uh, to David. I took Lad McConkey here. I actually took two rookies here. Uh, Lad McConkey, who if you told he's going to be the number one in the Chargers offense this year in terms of targets, in terms of receptions, uh, I don't think anybody would say you're crazy at how it projects right now. Quinton Johnson there, Josh Palmer's there. Um, just not a ton of, of great receiving options for Justin Herbert. And Lab McConkey's the type of guy that's going to move the chains. So um, I think he's going to obviously be better in a PPR format, full PPR. But, um, you know, at this point in the draft, I was happy to take him uh, as somebody I think that's going to be a pretty safe pick. I don't think Lad McConkey's going to go out there and put up three touchdowns in a, like in a game consistently, but you know, maybe he gives you five or six catches every week or something around there. So I liked him here. And then Trey Benson, it was a strictly an upside play. Um, mm-hmm. He's the, one of the higher end backup handcuff running backs, I think to, to roster in fantasy football this year, James Connor um, has never played a full, a full season in his career. So you're basically, you know, whether James Connor is as good as he was last year, and then maybe he gets hurt or James Connor does start having a drop off and Trey Benson can take over. Um, again, this was an, a strictly upside play. This would be a guy that if something happened to James Conner, people would be spending almost all of their fab to get him on the waiver wire. Uh, that, yeah. It would be that type of like potential league winner that everybody's going to mm-hmm. spend their fab for. So I wanted to make sure a high end handcuff like that on a good offense like Arizona. Um, again, he's not going to be one of my top running backs, but um, if, you know, if something happens to James Conner, he could easily be a, a top 24 running back. Uh, no question. So I, I took the chance here to take him there. Not, not to spoil your pick in two rounds, but are you normally heavy on rookie running backs? Uh, I, in, in situations where I'm not a big fan or I'm worried about the starter, uh, I do try to take a few handcuffs during the draft rookie running backs, because we saw like with uh, Devon a chain last year, like, you know, there you could get these guys later on in drafts. And then when everybody goes to spend money on fab, you already have them. Again, I can't take every backup running back, but the ones that I like, 
the rookie running backs, like, uh, you know, the one like you're talking about later on, he's one of my higher exposed yeah. players <laughs> uh, because I'm not a big Josh Jacobs guy this year. So, mm. um, so I, I do try to pick my darts where I want to throw them on those guys. Because uh, last year, right, similar thing, uh, Tank Bigsby, everybody loved mm -hmm. the Charbonnet, right? They didn't really hit, but it, it is, it's a lottery ticket, right? If it cashes, mm -hmm. you know, you're rich. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Very true. Yep, and then after Benson went in Joku, Curtis Samuel, Brian Robinson Jr. Uh, of the Commanders, whom I'm pretty high on, uh, and then Gus Edwards, Austin Eckler. Uh, so I was hoping that Brian Robinson would fall to me, but he did not. He went a few picks bef before, so I went with Devin Singletary. Strictly a volume uh, a volume pick after I only had Bijan and Swift, and I just need a backup running back for the bye weeks. Uh, I have no faith in the Giants offense at all. Uh, but Singletary should get a bunch of volume, and that's all I'm looking for in rounds nine. You know, like in rounds nine, ten, and later, it's just, uh, you know, just, just, just a safe backup. Uh, and then after Singletary went Brock Bowers, uh, Keon Coleman, not Kevin Coleman, although I would take Kevin Coleman over Keon any day. Uh, and then Khalil Shakir. Oh, I'm sorry, I spoiled your pick, John. So you are a Khalil Shakir guy. Uh, yeah, yeah. Let me just hype the uh, sports uh, ethos fantasy football draft guide again. If anyone's still listening, uh, check it out. Right, we're gonna be doing more mock drafts, more videos, and you know the, the value never stops coming. But yeah, I mean Shakir Coleman. I don't know where where do you guys go? Let's add Curtis Samuel in there. Right, let's go Bills wide receiver room. How are you ranking them? So I just wrote a thing on them actually yesterday. Uh, you know, based on price, I'm going to go Curtis Samuel with Joe Brady and what he was able to do. Like Curtis Samuel's best year was with Joe Brady um, in, in 2020, I believe it was, or 2019. I forget what year. Um, but you saw what they like to do. And, and Joe Brady's offense is very dink and dunk. That's why I think Kincaid's a smash. I thought David crushed mm -hmm. that pick because I, yeah. I think that I think Kincaid's going to be probably number one target getter on this team if I if I had to guess. And so um, I think that I like Sam again. And it comes down to like price. I think Coleman could be good, but I think it's going to take some time for him to kind of gel. Um, I, I, and if I can get Curtis Samuel comfortable in that offense, a very, very solid ADP um, with the offense coordinator with Allen and could be used as a, as a running back too. I think he could kind of, he's kind of uses that scat back at times. I like Curtis Samuel just based on the price, but Shakir is fine. Like I just, Shakir's target share last year, even when Diggs was struggling, was like 11%, yeah. like down the stretch, I think the last seven weeks. So like my big thing is like now they had a Coleman, now Kincaid's another year where he's under the belt. They still have Knox there in 12 personnel. Like where are those targets going to be? So like that's mm -hmm. my biggest worry with Shakir. Yeah, yeah. Uh, well, again, it's it's a coin flip, right? It's like uh, right. last year drafting on the Chiefs wide receivers, right? You just going to get a bunch and hope you get the ratio rice. Yeah. Right. Nobody really knows. <laughs> right. Uh, then we got, yeah, Nick Chubb, who, who I love. And then, oh, Kevin, Zeke, talk, convince, convince me that he's not, that he wasn't washed two years ago. I mean, he wasn't washed last year. I mean, when you're looking at the numbers um, and, and what he did last year, even in, I mean, in half, in, in half PPR and standard, Zeke's going to get yard. He's going to get volume. Like the Cowboys mm -hmm. love this guy. And as a Cowboy fan, I've seen it personally. I hate it. It drives me crazy. And I, and I don't like that. Um, but last year, I mean, he didn't get injured. He played every single game last year. You saw him have 80, 184 attempts. You, he only had three touchdowns, but that number will improve. I think the big thing with Zeke that was kind of interesting last year, I mean, which I think that is something that he didn't really do. He had, he had 65 targets. And, and on this offense, too, like we just talked about, David talked about earlier with the passing volume, he could get involved in the passing game, too. Like, it's a yeah. disgusting pick. Don't get me wrong. Like, I hate him <laughs> doing it. But as you're running back three and a half PPR, I like the volume that could possibly be there. Um, and, I, and I do think that I like Rico Daddle, too. Like, Daddle in the next round is fine, too, if that's the way you want to go. I just, coming from a, as a Cowboy fan, they targeted Zeke. They didn't add to that room yet. Yeah, they might. Um, but I think he's just going to get volume. Um, and then Jamison to me, I took Jamison the 10th round to me. That's just like a dart throw. Hey, Jared Goff, lions offense. Can he kind of be that breakout guy? Um, I don't mind taking some risks there. Jamison Williams is my favorite pick in the 10th plus round. Yeah. Wow. I mean, my favorite pick. I mean, I think, 
I think I think everyone should target him because Dan Campbell has nothing but good things to say about him. I loved him coming out of Alabama. I know the injuries derailed him and stuff, and it's like, oh, am I going to fall for Jamison again? But he's finally healthy, a full off season. Jared Goff got the bag. He's been working with Jamison all year. Uh, I just I just think he's at least he's going to be a consistent wide receiver three this season with upside of high end wide receiver two. I think he has that upside. So I like I like the flyer pick, Kevin. That's a great right. pick. Cool. Yeah. I think if he was gonna hit it, he would have hit last season, but I was all over him last season. I was like, just draft him, stash him, and then wait. You're just a year late, cover. John. You're just a year late. It's okay. <laughs> you know, like most of us are. <laughs> Um, okay, moving on. Let's try. We'll speed this. Uh, how, how long do you want to go for here? Just over an hour? That works for everyone. Yeah. 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 Mm-hmm. All right, Probably more. Speed it up. Yeah. We'll power through it. So we got Goddard. I took Jerome Ford. Um, I guess it's just Chubb insurance. Although I love Chubb. Everybody saw him squat like ten thousand pounds. Right. <laughs> yeah. That obviously yeah. translates into real NFL. Obviously. Um, uh, Ford. We got Firemouth. Blake Corum. So rookie running backs, Mandy, that's kind of your thing. Is he on your list? <laughs> uh, I mean, if I – I would take Blake Corm, yeah. Uh, if I didn't hadn't gone as heavy as I did, I would have definitely he's, – he's a target uh, that I would take for sure. Kyron Williams obviously burst on the scene last year, but Blake Corum, as Kevin knows, is a big Michigan fan. He's a right. touchdown magnet, uh, or at least he was in college. So I, I think – He's what definitely a. Uh, if you draft Kyron Williams, I would make sure you handcuff him with with Blake Corum because if you told me that Blake Corum ended up, you know, performing really well next year, if, if something happens to Kyron Williams, I wouldn't be surprised. Uh, do I think he's going to be the most efficient back, averaging like four and a half five yards a carry? No, but do I think he could score a lot of touchdowns next year? I do, uh, depending in the circumstance. So, uh, but Kevin watched him, so Kevin's probably as good as anybody to talk about him. Oh yeah, Blake. I, I struggle with Blake as an NFL guy. I always kind of have, but I think he landed in the perfect offense. I still think Kyron's about, Kyron Williams is the best value though, because I think people sure. are. I feel like I I tweeted this out a while ago, and I got like the cesspool like people coming <laughs> after me. I said, "What if like instead of like you know Blake Cornby and Devonta Chan, which everybody's kind of talking about, what if he's Tank Bigsby?" Right this year, like what if he's fool's gold? Because what if Kyron just doesn't get injured and if they just right. say, Hey, here's the volume, and then you're kind of worried because I like Blake from a receiver, but I mean he has that ability, but they don't utilize that really in this offense. Like, I, I don't I don't see them using him as like the receiving guy because I think they really do believe in Kyron Williams. I think that's their that's their guy, that's their workhorse. And I know it's not gonna be as much workhorse on the ground, but I still think he's their 70 30 guy right and yeah yeah quorum can be efficient the thing that you draft him for in in this kind of format if you're not like heavy running back rookies like you did if you're gonna draft him that's fine and if if kyron williams gets injured he's a top eight guy probably yeah. like you're plugging him in like and you're excited about that um so at this range i don't mind it but i i worry that he's more tank bigsby than he is at least this year i think next year yeah i think that if he gets that volume you have to like that but this year i worry that he's the, this year's tanks big tank bigsby mm. i get that and then cool. uh, the, oh go ahead no, no. i was just gonna lead you into your pick go ahead <laughs> after quorum i went with my guy, I love this value. Jaden Daniels, rookie quarterback out of Washington. You know, we all know what he did uh, at LSU. Um, he seems very pro ready. He walks right into an offense with fantastic weapons with Terry McLaurin, uh, with Jahan Dotson, whom I'm a believer still in the talent. Uh, I think uh, I think that Jaden's going to utilize that offense. And then there's a slight chance that IU could join him. But even if he doesn't, I think that Daniels rushes enough to – uh, to sneak into the top 10 this year. Uh, I really like his chances. I think he has a safe floor and crazy upside. Uh, and I do like him better than Caleb Williams, who he was taken right after Daniels. Uh, and then after Williams went Chase Brown, Jalen Rice. So we're going into just flyer picks, just lottery tickets over here. Uh, you know, uh, I mean, I like Jalen Wright, but even in the 10th round, I mean, there's Mostert, there's Achan. I mean, like, are you guys trying to snatch up Jalen Wright? Or like, is that just like a, I, you would rather wait later or is that a good price? Like, what do you think, David? Uh, I think it's a pretty fair price where you got okay. him at this point. Uh, I mean, the, the ceiling is tremendous on him. So, so like, are we just like, if a gets hurt, if Moster gets hurt, 
than it's the Jalen Wright show? Or I, I mean, like, exactly. I mean, yeah, I mean, he's they they said he's kind of like an HN clone in terms of just explosiveness, right? Like that he's another really really fast player. Um, hmm. He's probably one of the top, you know, third string running backs that you can probably get it, you know, in drafts. That Bobby I agree Curry. with. So it takes a lot for him to potentially have relevance but i've i mean i've heard him being talked about and uh a fast player in that offense is can produce so oh, sure sure um you know maybe i don't know i haven't read you know who I mean, maybe he could be the you know working on special teams as you know returner which could also you know contribute to chances that he scores a touchdown um sure. obviously mostert is what he's like my age he's like 32 32 yeah um and then hn is was very great <laughs> last year very efficient but like he also wasn't the perfect sign of health last year. So there are a lot of paths for him. And it just takes one of them getting hurt for him to actually get significant work. So sure. Um, sure. I think it's a good pick there. I think it's crazy to take him before the guy you just took though. Right. Like we're taking third running back before the second. I mean, I personally probably am taking the guy I took first, but I do think, I do think he's a good pick though. Hmm. Yeah, so after Wright went Shahid, Sutton, Lockett. Oh, I'm sorry, David. So you took Lockett, and then you took another rookie running back. Yeah, so I took Lockett here. This is I'm not like a big Lockett guy, but I'm like, look, he's he's one of the most like slept on values in fantasy. I'm getting him in what like this like the tenth round or something mm -hmm. like that. Like at this point, like he's going to be a bench receiver, uh, potentially plug and play if, if for some reason you know. JSN doesn't take the leap we expect or D DK or him go down. Like one of them get hurt. You know, he'll step, he'll step in and, and hopefully this offense also is going to uh, have more plays because Shane Waldron. I, I don't like Shane Waldron's offense personally. Um, and I, I think that uh, Lockett potentially could be, you know, a great pick here. Again, I'm not expecting like crazy thing, but the, the 10th round Tyler Lockett, he's fine for depth. Marshawn Lloyd there. The big thing he's got to figure out is fumbles. Um, he fumbled a lot in college and that's the one thing that scares me about him. He's in terms of his ability. I loved the tape that I watched on him. Uh, I think he's an, exp a, a very explosive back and I could, and Josh Jacobs to me is one of the guys I haven't drafted anywhere because I'm just concerned that just the wear and tear Josh Jacobs has had, um, since he's been in the NFL, that he becomes, I don't like throwing this term around. I don't think he necessarily will be this exactly, but like a plotter type of running back. <laughs> um, I think Marshawn Lloyd is good. When he steps on the field, there's going to be some juice there that you don't see with Josh Jacobs. Yeah, it's going to be one of those things that people are going to be like, why is, can Marshawn Lloyd like be seeing the field more? Because he gives another element of this offense that Jacobs isn't doing. And if he can get the fumbles figured out, I do think he's going to be one of those guys that – is going to be a value in, in a very, very good Green Bay offense. So um, Marshawn Lloyd's one of my highest uh, exposed players in terms of I, I try to get him in almost every draft I'm in um, just as uh, he's one of my more of my favorite handcuffs there. Um, but again, if, if those fumbles don't get fixed, then he'll be a wasted pick in all the drafts I take him. <laughs> you okay, know, at well, this price, it's not really a risk, right? Yeah. So let's yeah. try and we'll, we won't even go through the rest of the picks here. We'll try and wrap it up soon. So, but any, any, any picks you guys really liked in the last couple rounds? I guess we can just go with like our favorite pick for the rest of the draft. And I, I really like Brandon cooks this year. Um, mm -hmm. I think throughout the last like 10 weeks of the season, he was like, he was a wide receiver too. Cause all the Cowboys were doing were, was throwing the ball and that's what they're going to do this year. I think that Brandon cooks, I got him in the middle of the 12th round. I think he's a fantastic value. If you can get him at that, uh, at that price, I would highly recommend it. Uh, yeah, there you go, John. Um, yeah, I would say like how how I don't even know what my favorite pick here is uh, probably probably maybe uh, Ray Davis on the Bills. Um, but like, how big are you? Like, if you got McCaffrey, are you getting Elijah Mitchell? Like, if you spend first two rounds on a running back, are you taking the handcuff? Uh, probably not Elijah Mitchell. Um, he's one of the backups. I've, there's always the, what the strategy of like, you take your own backup or do you take someone else's backup? <laughs> um, I'm probably not taking Mitchell. Um, I, I like Ray Davis too. Um, and I think at the end of the day, like Mitchell's injury history, I just, uh, if McCaffrey gets hurt, he gets hurt. I, I'm probably not going to take Mitchell personally. Mm -hmm. All right, Kevin, take us home. 
Yeah, you know, going through the board, the the one guy that I I, I think is, you know, you took Mike Williams, um, and he's burned me multiple times in my exactly. life. Um, it, like he's just one of those guys that's tough, but I know he's going to open up on the pup list, um, but he can get activated whenever he wants. I think mm-hmm. it just comes down to when you're looking at him in this on this team, he has a chance to be the wide receiver too. Like he could really be that guy with Aaron Rodgers in this offense, and you're just kind of like. I don't, you know, that's one of those guys where it's like, it's risk. Obviously it's risk, but all these guys are risk involved, but I don't mind at this level of the draft. If you're taking a guy that could be wide receiver two and could be in an offense where he's going to get targets. I don't mind that. Like, I I think that Brees Hall's wide receiver two regardless. I think he's going to have the second most targets, but if Williams is there and you have him, that's not a bad pick. I like that pick there. Yeah. He's probably got 10% shot at 10 touchdowns, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. 90% chance you're going to get burned. You know, ten percent chance he's gonna get ten touchdowns. Ninety percent chance he tears something. Like that's really sure. that's the, sure. that's the Mike Williams there. Like that's what he is. <laughs> all right, guys. Oh, and, uh, yeah. All right, we'll wrap this up. All right, guys. Yeah, you know, really appreciate it. Especially Kevin, you jumping in here, jumping into the host. Uh, you know, thanks a lot. If you guys, if we do another mock, you know, we'd love to have you guys on. Uh, you know, because yeah. mocks are fun. They're easy. Um, but yeah, support the ethos. Check out the fantasy football draft guide. Jacob, you got anything? Uh, I just want to say thank you so much, Kevin and David, for joining. This was a ton of fun. I loved your um, analysis, uh, and I really appreciate you guys. Thank you. Yep, appreciate it, guys. Yeah, thanks for having me.